Hello, this is Susan Woodcock. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. I'm going to share a new blackout Roman shade method with no pinholes of light. If you follow my YouTube channel or my uh, blog, you probably saw about four years ago that I shared a new method for making Roman shades that involved a daisy chain or French tag that was sewn between the blackout lining and the face fabric and or inner lining used to make a Roman shade. Well, that method worked great. And a lot of workrooms have adopted it and are using it to create Roman shades. I've used it in my workroom, but I still wanted to find a better method because as good as that method was, it didn't work for all fabrics. And you could still see some light, especially with light color fabrics. And with the popularity of white and neutral light color fabrics today, I wanted a method that you absolutely had no pinholes of light. And I wanted it to be affordable and also easy to learn. So I think I'm onto something. <laughs> I think you'll really like this. So let's get started with this brand new Roman shade method. I am introducing the Buckram Fold Blackout Roman Shade. So this Roman Shade uses buckram instead of ribs or rods to provide stability and structure to the shade folds. Blackout lining prevents shadowing, so you do not see the buckram that's inside of the shade because of the blackout lining. So this is not a method that would work with a plain sateen lining. This technique has been tested by workrooms and it works for both blackout lined only and blackout with interlining as shown um, in this presentation. The shade that I will show in this program has interlining. A printable PDF download with a supply list and step-by-step -step instructions for both the Buckram Fold Blackout and Buckram Fold Blackout and Interlined shades can be found on my website at homedeckgal.com. The photos here on the screen are three examples of shade made with the Buckram Fold method. The one at the top right, the yellow fabric, is blackout lining only. The one on the bottom right, the teal blue paisley fabric that is lined and interlined with blackout lining. And then the one on the bottom left is blackout lining only and face fabric. The materials and supplies used for the shade in this presentation are listed below. You will find this in the PDF instruction sheet that you can download from my website. So I encourage you to print that off and then watch this presentation so that you can make notes as you're reading the instructions. You will need face fabric, obviously, black outlining, and I use Hanes Out Black, heavy flannel inner lining. You can also omit the inner lining, as I mentioned. And here's one of the specialty products you'll need, Dufix Fusible Buckram, also known as crinoline. And in the Dufix catalog, it's um, woven fusible crinoline number 000398. You'll also need the Dufix Fusible Blackout Tape. And in the catalog, that's number 081010. And those numbers are included in the download. You'll need shade rings with either a cord shroud or ladder tape or the Safety Shade Forever rings and ring locks. Lift cord, the size needed for whatever lift system you're using. A weight bar, whichever you prefer, a flat weight bar or a round weight bar. And basic sewing tools and rulers. You will not need a sewing machine. <laughs> so a uh, needle and thread and um, scissors and measuring tapes, uh, just the basic sewing tools. And then a Roman shade lift system that accepts cords. So I've made these shades with roller tubes, motorized, and also with the track systems like um, Dufixed Auto Descend and Rolly Company Easy Rig and the RBS system.
The following instructions are for a shade that is finished 32 inches wide by 50 inches long with 8 inch vertical ring spacing. And as you'll see as we go through the slides, you can adjust this for any size shade. One thing I really like about using buckram instead of ribs is you don't have to have any connectors. So buckram comes on a big roll. You can roll out long pieces and not have to join them together with any kind of connector like you do with ribs. Here are the cuts for this shade with eight inch vertical ring spacing. So um, I'm using the four inch buckram. If you have different size ring spacing, I'll explain how to figure that out. So we're cutting the face fabric, the finished width plus eight inches by the finished length plus 10 inches. So that's eight inches for double fold two inch side hems. So it's a four inch allowance along each side and then a doubled four inch bottom hem. So that's an additional eight inches plus two inches for tabling allowance and mounting onto your lift system or board. You'll cut the inner lining and the blackout lining, the finished width by the finished length plus two inches. And you'll cut six pieces of four inch fusible buckram, the finished width minus half inch. And here's a note um, for adjusting your spacing. The size of buckram used should be half of the ring spacing. For example, three inch buckram is used for six inch ring spacing. Four inch buckram is used for eight inch ring spacing. If the ring spacing is seven inches, you can use four inch buckram and tear off a half an inch. Only woven buckram, like the Dufix fusible buckram, can be ripped to size. If you're using a different buckram, you'll have to cut it to size. I will say I have not tried any other buckram in this method. I find the Dufix fusible to be um, exceptional. <laughs> it's a really, really nice buckram because it has the fusible completely on one side and not a strip of fusible. And it's also a woven, so it blends better with the, the fabrics for making a Roman shade. So um, I have not tried this with any other buckram, but you might want to experiment with that. You'll need to pre-plan how many pieces of buckram by figuring your ring spacing. You will need one piece of buckram for each section between the rings. In the photos at the bottom on the left, that's a shade that I'm making with blackout lining only, no inner lining, and three inch buckram. So that has six inch ring spacing. The photo on the right is an inner line shade with eight inch ring spacing. So I'm using four inch buckram. Here's the fabrication step-by-step step for an inner line shade. Place the main fabric face down on the work table, fold over four inches on each side, measuring to check that the width is accurate. I have a gridded table canvas, so I can easily lay off Roman shades using the table grid. You'll fold under the cut edge and press to create two inch doubled side hems on each side. Do your side hems first. Then fold over the bottom eight inches, fold under the cut edge and press to create a doubled four inch bottom hem. And then place inner lining over the back of the face fabric, smoothing it out and fitting it under the side and bottom hems. You can lightly press it if needed. Starting at the bottom, place one piece of buckram fusible side up and even with the bottom edge of the shade. This will be at the finished length above the hem. If you look at image A on the top right, you can see the very bottom edge of the buckram is at that crease line created when I pressed in the doubled hem. So the first piece of buckram is at the very bottom of the shade next to the inner lining. Then you'll measure from the top edge of that first piece of buckram four inches and place the next piece. Then you'll measure up four inches and place the next piece. Make sure the fusible side is up. That's very important and that's why it's in bold in your instructions. You'll repeat this for the rest of the buckram pieces, spacing them four inches apart.
After your buckram pieces are laid out, you want to secure them so that you can move the shade around because you're gonna have to do some sewing. I like using the blue painter's tape. Um, you also can stab pins into the work table or pin through and, and pin the buckram pieces in place, or you could use weights to hold it in place. To mark your ring spacing, you'll measure across the top edge of each piece of buckram, two and a half inches from each side so that you miss the side hem, and 10 inches or less apart within the body of the shade in the center. This shade used four columns of rings spaced nine inches apart. And then you can see um, there at the bottom, I'm just using a pencil mark to mark the top edge of the buckram. Because it's black outlined, you can use a pencil. It'll never show. Now you have to hand stitch the buckram to the face fabric. And this is going to hold the shade together so that it lifts evenly with the buckram. You're going to stitch through the buckram, through the inner lining, and catch the face fabric with a stitch. Make sure you get a generous bite or stitch into the buckram. You don't want to be right on the edge of the buckram because it could tear. So go ahead and get a good generous bite into the buckram, stitch through, small stitch to the face fabric, and um, I use double thread and, and sew twice. It's just like sewing on shade rings. If you um, sew on shade rings by using one big long piece of thread and sewing all the way through, clipping between and tying off, that's perfect. You can do that here too. Because blackout lining will be used, you can float the threads from each tack point without clipping if you'd like to. Continue tacking all the buckram pieces to the face fabric. For this shade, there were 24 tack points, four tack points at the top of each piece of buckram, and there were six pieces of buckram. After all the buckram is tacked, you can remove the blue painter's tape. And now we're going to add the blackout tape. So you'll cut small pieces, about three quarter inches square, of the Dufix fusible blackout tape. You'll need one piece for each tack point. Lift up each piece of tacked buckram and it, the tacking sort of creates a hinge. So it's like opening a door. You open up, um, lift up a piece of buckram, place a square of fusible blackout tape, fusible side up, again, that's very important, and then fold the buckram back over. So you're gonna have one square for each tack point. So for this shade, I needed 24 little squares of fusible blackout tape. If you don't have the Dufix fusible blackout tape, you can make your own by using an iron-on fusible web on the back of blackout lining and cut out your own little squares. But I will say it's really fast and convenient to buy this tape on a roll and just cut off the little squares. You don't have to measure them. Um, this is just a little patch to hide the stitching when we stitch the rings on the black outlining. So don't worry about getting them perfect. They don't have to be perfectly square. Just whack them off <laughs> and stick them underneath the buckram at each tack point. Easy. After all the pieces of blackout tape are in place underneath the buckram, carefully place the black outlining face up over the back covering the buckram and keeping the shade neat and square. Slip the black outlining under the pressed side hems and bottom hem, or open up the pressed side hems and so you can press it all the way to the edges. And press the entire back of the shade using steam to fully secure the fusible buckram to the back of the black outlining. And because the little patches of blackout tape we're also fusible side up. Those are going to adhere to the back of the buckram. So the blackout tape sticks to the buckram. The buckram sticks to the blackout lining. You don't have to have a Dufix iron to um, use the products. I have the Reliable Velocity iron that's shown here in the photo. That is a steam generator. Um, inside of that iron, it heats the water and um, has a very even steam. Um, but if you have the Dufix iron set up, the boiler iron, that's fantastic. And you are going to love making shades with this method. I, I 
think you will. <laughs> I really, really think it's easy. Now that the black outlining is all pressed and secure and the buckram is all in place, you can finish the side hems. Because it's black outlined, you do not want to stitch through the side hems, so you will need to use a fusible tape or a fabric glue like Rolly Fringe Adhesive or Textiles Tacket. And then before you finish off that bottom hem, slip in your weight bar. And I like to hand sew with a ladder stitch up the sides of the corner there um, at the bottom hem because the hand stitching weaves into the fabric a little tighter and pulls the fibers together instead of just laying in there um, like the glue does. So you can glue across the top of the hem, but I like to hand stitch around the sides because on a Roman shade, when they're lifted up, you're looking at those corners. So you want them to be nice and neat. Now you can start sewing your shade rings. The first shade rings are sewn at the top of the hem. You want to make sure you stitch into the bottom hem and you're stitching below the tack point used on the buckram. So you're stitching over top of that little patch of blackout tape that you added underneath the buckram. You do not sew through the buckram um, and you absolutely do not want to sew through to the front of the shade. You don't want to pierce that little piece of blackout tape that's inside the shade. So it's actually pretty easy to sew the rings on because you don't have to worry about stitching all the way through. You'll be sewing over the blackout tape and this hides the pinholes of light. You do want to make sure you catch the hem on the first row of um, first line of rings here at the bottom. And I'm using the Safety Shade Forever rings, which are clear, which don't show up very good in the pictures. Continue sewing the rings on all the way up the body of the shade. You don't need to mark the rings because when you made those tack points in the buckram, after you iron over the back, you're going to see these little raised bumps where each knot was sewn um, for each tack point. You can feel them with your hands. It's like Braille. You can mark below them with a disappearing pin if you'd like to, but you'll sew just below those tack points on top of that square of blackout tape, um, about a quarter inch, no more than a half inch below each tack point in the buckram. So it makes it really fast because for this point, you really don't need to get out um, a ruler and mark again. You can just feel your way up the shade and sew on the rings. After all the rings are sewn on, you can measure and mark the finished length and complete the shade by attaching it to a board and or to your headrail system. This shade used Safety Shade Forever rings and ring locks, which you can see in the photo on the right. Be sure to attach the required cord safety devices, labels, and warning tags. And that's it. <laughs> it's really an easy shade to make. And here's a little additional information. When using buckram that is exactly half of the vertical ring spacing, I've found that it creates a slightly spaced cascading look to the folds of the shade. I really like this look. I think it stacks up neater than all stacking up on top of each other, um, but you might want a tighter stack. So you can experiment with using smaller pieces of buckram than the fold size. So for eight inch ring spacing, instead of four inch buckram, you could try three inch buckram. Um, it would probably depend on your fabrics and the lining and inner lining combination. And uh, you might want to try a test first with a scrap of fabric and see how it works. This technique works well without inner lining and only using the blackout lining. In fact, that's the whole reason I came up with this method because I didn't want to have to use inner lining for all my shades, especially with a heavier fabric or a budget customer. So this technique is super for black outlined only shades. So you just follow the instructions and omit the inner lining. So you can see in these four photos, the buckram is tacked to the back of the face fabric, lift up the buckram, lay in the pieces of blackout tape, in the bottom center photo, I'm laying the blackout lining over, press it all nice and neat, finish your side hems, add your weight bar, finish your bottom hem, sew on your rings, and you're done. And look how pretty that stacks up in the photo on the right. 
Now, you're probably wondering, how do I price for something I've never made? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, the inner line shade in this instruction was 32 inches wide by 50 inches long. It took me one hour and 40 minutes to complete from the cutting of the materials to sewing the very last shade ring and measuring the length. That time does not include mounting to the lift system because it depends on what lift system you're using. So I sort of figure that into my lift system pricing and I round up to two hours. So once learned, it should take less time to make. Plus I was photographing while I was taking, um, making this shade. So the one hours and 40 minutes, um, I think that's a pretty good time. And um, the next time I make a shade this size, it'll probably be a little less time. But I'm gonna round up to two hours so that um, I have a generous amount of time allowed in my pricing. The approximate cost of the supplies was $18.65. I'm gonna round that up to $20. So to figure the square foot price for the blackout buckram fold shade, I'll take the hourly rate times two hours of time plus the cost of supplies, divide that by the square foot of this shade, and that gives me the price per square foot. To determine the square footage of your shade, take the width times the length and divide by 144. And for this shade, that was 10 and a half square feet. Then you'll want to add for the lining, inner lining, and headrail system. So for this shade, um, using the example of $50 per hour, we determined we're going to use two hours. So that's $100 for time, plus rounded up to $20 for supplies. So that's $120 divided by 11 and a half square feet equals 10 and a half per square foot. Um, I think earlier I said 10 and a half square feet. I looked at the wrong number there. It was 11 and a half square feet for this shade, 32 inches wide by 50 inches long. And we added up the time and the supplies divided by 11 and a half square feet. And that comes out to $10.50 per square foot. Now I'm going to add for the lining, inner lining and headrail system. I didn't include the lining and inner lining or the headrail system because those are things that I mark up in my workroom. So um, I don't want to include that in the square foot price because it can vary. It might be a different type of lining. The customer might have wanted a certain color lining and the headrail systems vary. It might be a clutch. It might be motorized. It might be a spring roller. So, um, and then I mark all those up. So that's separate. So I have a base price of $10.50 per square foot. So here's an example. It'll be the square foot price plus the linings and headrail, and that equals my wholesale price. So 11 and a half square feet times $10.50 per square foot equals $120 plus linings and headrail system I'm going to say $250 here for my imaginary customer. And the total price is $370 wholesale price for this shade complete. Now, you might be looking at the $10.50 per square foot price and thinking, wow, that's a lot. I really like that. I'd like to make that much. Or you might be looking at $10.50 a square foot going, don't give away a shade. <laughs> That's too cheap. My per square foot shade price for a basic room of shade is higher than that. Well, okay, that's great. I am not saying that you should charge $10.50 a square foot. This is for learning purposes only. And your pricing should be based on your overhead time studies region you live and your experience. You never use another workroom's pricing as your own, but you do sit down and calculate based on your per hour fee, what you need to make per hour. And um, I hope that this helps you to do that and that you can come up with a price that is fair and very, very profitable for you. So thank you for viewing. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. This is a brand new idea. 
and um, I would like to thank the workrooms that volunteered their time to test this new shade method. It was really great to get their perspective and their input helped me to write a better how-to instruction. And they made some really beautiful Roman shades using this method. I've used this method um, to also make a relaxed Roman shade and a reverse mount shade and they all came out beautifully. And I'll be sharing the um, relaxed Roman shade uh, instructions soon. And you're probably wondering, how do you create a relaxed shade with buckram in it? Well, the bottom part is relaxed. The rest of the shade is square. Again, there's a PDF download of the how-to instructions on my website at homedeckgal.com. And I am not charging for this. You can go to the website and download them for free. But in exchange, I would really appreciate your support if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and promote workroom education by sharing this new method. And be sure to tag me if you share on social media and sharing my websites to your followers on social media and to your workroom friends. And if you share Roman shades made using this new buckram fold method and tag me on social media, I will do the same for you and share your creations to all of my followers. And that way we can help to build the workroom industry and show the world that we are all creating and sharing and learning together. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you like this new idea and that you give it a try. If you have any questions, you can get in touch with me. My email address is susan at homedeckgal.com. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.